There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another book haul. This is a physical book haul. I indicated it was coming several weeks ago. By the time you see this, I'm filming it on May 23rd, I think. There's quite a few videos ahead of it in the pipeline, but know that there are plenty more coming where this came from. I have two more stacks, perhaps higher than this stack. I mentioned on my last physical book haul, you may have seen a, an, at least a few parts of a ongoing ebook haul but the last physical book haul that I did I said that I was getting more politically correct and not buying so much off Amazon that was a lie or that was only temporary the uh, bookstore closest to my house that has a large selection of English books Kinokuniya books they did do a mail order service during the first month of the pandemic here in Tokyo and I ordered a bunch of stuff 80% of what's here I got through them, so I was happy to be spending my money elsewhere, but then they've sharply curtailed the availability of that. I have a bunch more that I've already ordered from them that will be coming later, but they said from now on we're not doing email orders. You have to come into the store to make the special order, and that just makes it, I'm sorry, too inconvenient for me, especially when it gets hot in the summer. Their store is not far from me, but it just happens to be situated in one of the hottest wind-free 15 minute walks from Shinjuku station that exists in the world and I avoid going there like the plague in the summer because there's no shade there's no breeze no matter what the weather might be in other parts of the city it's just I mean obviously if it's cloudy it's cloudy there you know what I mean but there, it's just a horrible 15 minute walk in the summer and I sound like a really privileged asshole right now so let's just move on shall we and from now on other than in this video I'm not going to specify where I'm buying my books anymore because uh, I am not a reliably politically correct bookshopper and probably never will be. Two by Ursula Orange, who was a mid-20th century British novelist, not all that famous in her lifetime, but her books are being brought back into print by this wonderful Dean Street Press off-print called Furrowed Middlebrow. First we have Company in the Evening. I read her, I think it was her debut, called Begin Again last year. I have a full review. I will link in the show notes. I believe I buddy read that with Leah. I think, I'm pretty sure I did. And we're going to be buddy reading these two. First up is Tom Tiddler's Ground, which is 1941. It was published in America at that time as Ask Me No Questions. This is her third novel. Its protagonist, Caroline Cameron, is charming and witty, no doubt, but also superficial and a bit immoral. I'm feeling personally attacked. <laughs> and second is Company in the Evening, a bit later in her oeuvre, her second last novel, 1944. And it is about a young divorcee in London, Vicky, with a small daughter and what she does to support and reassure herself. Opening sentence. I did not want to keep on idly reading and rereading this notice, and yet, as I sat in my third-class railway carriage, traveling slowly and with frequent stops, not to mention two changes, towards my destination, Winterbury Green in Sussex, my eyes were constantly falling on it. Next up is a Welsh novel that somebody mentioned on Twitter, and I could find a copy in, at an unmentionable website that uh, has a branch in Japan, and I could get it for about five bucks brand new and delivered the next day. The Lost Thumb by Orla Owen. I showed this to Charlotte when we had our little bookish chat, and it is set in a small town in New South Wales. Wait a minute, is New South Wales... I think I made a mistake here. New South Wales is in Australia, isn't it? <laughs> be called New if it was, would it? I think I totally... <laughs> I got that all wrong. I've just checked online. Orla Owen was born in Ireland, and this story of The Lost Thumb is set in New South Wales, Australia. So there's, as far as I know, there's no Welsh connection. I think I read something about New South Wales and was maybe tipsy or half asleep and thought, oh, it's a Welsh novel. It's not. Anyway, <laughs> it is about, I think, a brother and sister who are uh, left alone for the night, and the sister decides to do something rash, and I think it might involve... Uh, Severance of a particular digit? I will find out. <laughs> Opening two sentences. Mother tells people Luella and I are identical twins, but you can tell us apart. I'm missing the top of my left thumb. Published in 2019. 
I was so excited to get a physical copy of this. This is The Long Gaze Back, an anthology of Irish women writers. It's an anthology of short stories edited by Sinead Gleason. I did it on audio and I absolutely loved it. But I really wanted the paper copy because, you know, when you're doing a book on audio, especially in the early stages of a global pandemic, my mind did wander occasionally and I want to reread a bunch of them. And once I do that, I think I'm going to do a full review. This was one of the best anthologies of short fiction I have ever read. And it's out of print, so I had to really hunt for a copy online. I shouldn't say that it's out of print. At the time that I was searching for it. I think that Book Depository was shut down, so uh, I don't know if it's still in print. It was published in 2015. I think I got this copy from the States. Next up is Winter in Sokcho Sokcho by Alisa Shua Dusapin, translated from the French by Anissa Abbas Higgins. Boy, both uh, writer and translator have fascinating sounding names. It is set in a tourist town on the border of North and South Korea. Dusapin was born in France, but her middle name sounds a little bit Asian. Oh, good goodness, we gotta find out about this. Elisa, I said Elsa, it's Elisa Shua Dusapin. She is a Korean French author. How fascinating. The protagonist is a young French Korean woman who works at a receptionist at a rundown guest house and strikes up an uneasy relationship with a French graphic novelist. Published this year in English. Next up is Bunny by Mona Awad. I've heard very mixed things about it, but I snatched it up. Oh, she was born in Montreal. She's Canadian. I had no idea. I had no idea until this moment, I don't think. Oh, she lives in America now. So we'd say Canadian-American writer. I heard really good things about her debut, 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. Never got around to reading it. This was in the BookTube Prize rounds uh, this year, but I don't think it's... I think it's been eliminated already. It's a 2019 novel. And it's about a bunny. (laughs) It's about a creative writing student. That doesn't sound very good. Opening. We call them bunnies because that is what they call each other. Seriously. Bunny. Example. Hi, bunny. Hi, bunny. What did you do last night, bunny? I hung out with you, bunny. Remember, bunny? That's right, bunny. You hung out with me and it was the best time I ever had. Bunny, I love you. I love you, bunny. And then they hug each other so hard, I think their chests are going to implode. I'm not sure I need to read any more, but we'll give it an honest try later. <laughs> Next is a novel by Myla Goldberg, Feast Your Eyes. I absolutely loved her, I don't know if it was her debut, but about a decade ago, I read her Bee Season. Is that what it's called? Bee Season. I've talked about it a few times. Most recently in the Sex and Literature tag. This novel sounds very strange, and it was published last year, I believe. Yeah, 2019. It's structured as a photography show exhibit catalog at MoMA, and it's the life story of Lillian Preston, America's worst mother, America's bravest mother, America's worst photographer, or America's greatest photographer, depending on who was talking. I don't know if it's based on a real-life photographer, but yes, I remember hearing that it is set up like you are looking through a photography exhibit catalog. I wouldn't try it other than that I loved a previous book by this writer. Next up, the Korean novel everybody's talking about this season, Kim Ji-young, born 1982, by Cho Nam-ju. I hear this isn't very good, I don't think it's going to be a Sean book, but I bought it anyway, and we'll give it a try. It's about a Korean woman, born 1982, uh, raising questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression. So I'm a big fan of uh, exposing all that. This is translated from the Korean by Jamie Chang, but I hear it's not very good. I would love to be pleasantly surprised. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, (laughs) here's another book I heard wasn't very good, but I don't care because I think this one might be a Sean book. The criticisms I heard of this made me think, oh, that sounds good. The Discomfort of Evening by Marieke Lucas Rijneveld, translated from the Dutch by Michelle Hutchison. And this one's quite dark, but a 10-year-old girl, Jazz, who is a little bit strange, and then there's a tragedy that ruptures the family, 
and warps her curiosity into a vortex of increasingly disturbing fantasies. That may be too dark for me, but I want to give this one a try. Okay, so the opening is disturbing, and I quite like it, so let's have a listen. The paragraph doesn't even end at the end of the first page, so I'm just going to cut it off at a certain point. I was ten and stopped taking off my coat. That morning, Mum had covered us one by one in utter ointment to protect us from the cold. It came out of a yellow bogina tin and was normally used to prevent dairy cow's teats from getting cracks, calluses, and cauliflower-like lumps. The tin's lid was so greasy you could only screw it off with a tea towel. It smelled of stewed udder, the thick slices I'd sometimes find cooking in a pan of stock on our stove, sprinkled with salt and pepper. They filled me with horror, just like the reeking ointment on my skin. Mum pressed her fat fingers into our faces like the round cheeses she patted to check whether the rind was ripening. Oh my god, that's very compelling. You should know that in Japan, they don't do hardcover books. Like, even when they somehow make arrangements with Western publishers, unless it's a textbook, you're hard-pressed to find a hardcover book in Japan. But even when they import Western books, new releases, they make some special arrangement with the publishers. So many of these, or the next two, they are, they are oversized soft covers that they wouldn't probably be available anywhere else in the world. And this one is Maggie O'Farrell's latest, Hamnet which is her, what is she doing, some kind of a takeoff on Hamlet? I think Eric Carl Anderson is the only one that had mixed re, a mixed review of this. Everybody else seemed to like it. I'm not a big fan of retellings or anything like that, but I love Maggie O'Farrell, so I will give it a try. And it's about a young girl in Stratford-upon-Avon with a twin brother named Hamlet. And I can't remember the exact connection to Shakespeare's life. Was his son Hamlet? Did he have twins? I don't know. So anyway, I'll find out. When they're kind of intertextual like this, I prefer not to know very much about the real story until I finish. So I probably won't even look that up until later. Okay, well, the historical note has already given it away. There were twins, and the boy, Hamnet, died, aged 11. Four years later came the play, Hamlet. And the last one for this particular book haul is a Scottish novel, Shugi Bain by Douglas Stewart. And I heard a lot about it, but I didn't find out until I had it in my hot little hands that it's a gay novel. I had no idea. I'm really all the more excited about it now that I know. Set in the early 1980s in Glasgow. It's a chunkster. I guess it goes back in time. The opening chapter is set in 1992, but it goes back as far back as 1981. Stay tuned. There's plenty more where that came from. Thanks for watching.